Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Place Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So all the important news and editorial that will be relevant for the civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 18th of February. The first important news is from the Hindu, that is the concern over post and traffic pangolians in India. Second is Manipur to host B20 conference. Third, center turn focus on key G20 meetings, which India is chairing for this particular year. The second last budget focus on capex to crowd in the private investment. And the last is an editorial, social security and the story of two budgets. I pass from the news and editorial discussion. At the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions and these questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do press a like button. So starting the session with the first news that is concerned over the post and traffic of the pangolians in India. Something very important for your prelims examination. This is relevant for general studies paper 3 under the subtopic that is conservation, environmental pollutions, degradation and EI. So why we are discussing a news because there was a report that was published, right? So, pangolians ki agar baat kare, it is reported to be among the most trafficked wild animal globally and it is targeted for illegal wildlife trade in India. Recently, there was a report which was published by Traffic and World Wildlife Fund India. They have released the finding and have compiled a fact sheet. The title of the fact sheet is named as Indian Pangolian that is birded in illegal wildlife trade. This is uh, the report that is published ahead of the World Pangolian Day, which is observed on 18th of February, right? So very important in this context. And today is the day which uh, the report, basically the World Pangolian Day is celebrated. And in this context, uh, the awareness program is very important, right? We'll see some of the important facts that as an aspirant for this examination, you must know. And the direct question in prelims examination is expected always in this regard. Now, more about the fact sheets, ki baat kare, jo ki, uh, published ki gai hai. the latest analysis on the pangolian seizures uh, in India by traffic and World Wildlife Fund India has found that this was a data they have taken into account from 2017 to 18. And this data has been told that they found that 1203 pangolian were poached and trafficked for illicit wildlife trade and 342 have been seized during the incident. Now, pangolians are poached mainly for international market, specifically the country like China and South Asian country for their scales, which is used as an ingredient for traditional medicine and are believed to cure various elements. I'll show you the scales also in the later part of the video. There's a picture that will give you an idea how does the scale actually look like. Even you can make out uh, with this image, these are the scales that is mostly used for the other medicinal purposes. Now, pangolian meat is also consumed as a delicacy and consumed for its alleged medicinal properties. Now, some finding that was there by the report uh, World Wildlife Fund ke through. And even for the traffic, they have found that 1203 pangolian have been found for illegal trade. 342 have been seized. 24 state and union territories of India has been reported with a part of this. 50% of seizure incident include live pangolian. 40% of the seizures include the pangolian scales. And Odisha is the state that has reported maximum number of seizure of incident. And the number of pangolian seized is 154. And you know, this was a total number reported and 74 were seized. So these are the important factual information, very relevant for the prelims and mains examination. Specifically, if you're writing in mains, make sure you are incorporating all the important points. 
ना पेंगोलियन ट्रैफिकिंग की अगर बात करें द रिपोर्ट फाउंड अ सिग्निफिकेंट नंबर ऑफ पेंगोलियन ट्रैफिकिंग इंसिडेंट दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस अक्रॉस द कंट्री एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द लेटेस्ट फैक्ट्री ट्वेंटी फोर स्टेट देर ट्वेंटी फोर स्टेट प्लस यूनियन टेरिटरीज राइट दे आर एक्चुअली ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ दिस राइट एंड द यूटीज आर द डेटा विच इज डिराइव फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड एटीन टू ट्वेंटी टू Odisha reported with the highest number of seizure cases. This is followed by Maharashtra. The data is there for Odisha. One fifty four total cases report gayi, jahan pe seventy four seized hui hai. And in Maharashtra, forty seven seizures have taken place out of one thirty five Bengalians. Now, where illegal Bengalian are trafficked is rampant. Basically, kon kon se se top five countries hain jahan pe Bengalians seized ke jaati hai, aur top aise five destinations jahan pe wo bheji jaati hain. The first uh, among them is Indonesia, then followed by Uganda, Myanmar, Ivory Coast, and Cameroon. So these are the countries where most Bengalis are seized, and the top destination for these country include China, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, and Malaysia. Very important. These are the data directly from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Now. Seizures of the traffic pangolian or rice. Uh, basically, if you compare for the year wise, this is still eighteen. This will clearly make you evident of the fact that how the number is increasing at the global level. Now, seizure incidents. If we are talking about, I was talking about the scale part. So these are the scales of pangolians. The seizure incident include the live pangolian and the derivatives such as scales and skin, claws, meat, bones, and other part. Even the Carcasses is also there, and about fifty percent of the seizure incident include live pangolin, while forty percent in include the pangolin scale. So apart from the live animal scale, is mostly which is used for medicinal and other purposes, is being trafficked or being seized by the agencies. Now pangolin species in India. If we are talking about India, is home to two kind of species, two variant of species that is there. The first is called Indian pangolin. This is the one variety, and the other variant is called Chinese pangolin. Both of which is found uh, to be illicit trade despite having the legal protections. Right? I'll tell you what are the legal protection provided. And Bihar, West Bengal, and Assam has seen the presence of both the species. Now talking about the part of conservation in India. India is home to two species, as I've told you. Or in dono pangolin ko the protections mili hai Schedule One. Wild Life Protection Act 1972 में दी गई है. Very very important for your prelims examination. There might be a direct question that can be framed, right? So these are the two variety. This is how the Chinese pangolin actually look like, and this is the Indian pangolin, right? Now recommendations that is given by the fact sheet which is published. The fact sheet has actually stressed the need for demand where pangolin consumer countries need to strengthen the enforcement part to deter the trade. and even to curb this happening and these steps would help the essential role in safeguarding the future of the species and preserving a significant ecological role and playing with their habitat so sustainability of the environment forest has to be maintained this is what the recommendations is there now moving to the other news manipur to host b20 conference something important for general studies paper 2 under the sub topic of general studies that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations so the northeastern state of manipur is hosting the fourth business 20 b20 is better known as business 20 conference and business 20 conference is an official g20 dialogue forum of the global business community i'll tell you more about b20 in the later part of the video the delegations of 23 participant country are there in the b20 sessions in manipur now what is b20 precise information that will be relevant for both prelims as well as mains examination if there is a direct question you can even write about that so business 20 is an event as a part of g20 summit right it's meant to express common views on international boundaries and community and the main purpose consists of the developing countries recommendations issuing the relevant commitment for business leaders and even business organizations to deal with contemporary issues 
Now, there is a plenary sessions which has been organized apart from the G20 meeting which was held in Indore. Yahan pe bhi plenary sessions ki gai hai and this will focus on the investment opportunities and support ecosystem for doing business in Manipur. Although government is uh, putting its best possible efforts jahan pe North Eastern region mein investment badhane ki baat ki gai hai. Opportunities in core areas, healthcare and medicine tourism, tourism and hospitality, information and Uh, communications technology and handloom and textile which is again very important in the north eastern region and some of the gi part is also included in the handloom and textiles now participating nations ki agar baat kare kaun kaun se aise nations hai jo participate kar rahe hain that include australia argentina bangladesh bhutan canada china france greece iceland japan nepal russia tlis Singapore, South Africa, Switzerland, Tunisia, Uganda, United States, and United Kingdom. So these are the participant country in the B20, and they together compound for 85% of the world GDP. Now moving to the other news center, turn focus on key G20 meeting. Something important for gender studies paper two under the subtopic of gender studies, that is bilateral regional grouping and agreement involving India and affecting India's interest. So India's top diplomat machinery have said that they are working proactively to ensure a smooth G20 ministerial meeting on March 1st 2023 the event will see the participant of many developed countries that will be also provided meeting with coinciding the first anniversaries of the Ukraine war and official said that this event is very important because the foreign ministerial meeting will provide an impression that how india is actually conducting the entire part of g20 presidency now there is a draft resolution signed united nation general assembly during the key meeting the g20 meeting will also have an i where there will be a resolutions on the united nation general assembly which will see for peace specifically in the region where ukraine war is ongoing between russia and ukraine so india formally officially has not voted for this part and they have abstained in this part but uh, more or less g20 country will be making a consensus that what should be the road map and india has abstained on roughly on two dozens occasions uh, basically in the united nation security council and united nation general assembly India ने दोनों प्लेटफॉर्म पे एबस्टेंड किया है वोटिंग से नाउ स्पेशल इनवाइटीज कंट्रीज की अगर बात करें अकॉर्डिंग टू द शेड्यूल दैट वॉज शेयर बाय द मेंबर्स जी ट्वेंटी स्पेशल इनवाइटीज इंक्लूड द कंट्री लाइक बांग्लादेश इजिप्ट मॉरिशस नीदरलैंड नाइजीरिया ओमान सिंगापुर स्पेन एंड यूनाइटेड अरब एमिरट्स नाउ मूविंग टू द न्यूज budget focus on capex to crowd in the private investment something important for gender studies paper 3 under the sub topic of gender studies that is indian economy and issues related to planning mobilization resource growth and development so according to the reserve bank of india rbi ne apne state of economy report mein bataya hai that union budget focus on capital expenditure is expected to crowd in private investment right and the capital investment government will focus on the part of infrastructure development hospitals and many other infrastructure like road hospital and other stuff right so i think most of you must be aware of what capital expenditure is there's two part this capital expenditure and there's revenue expenditure where government take care for wages salaries and other part on capital expenditure mostly the infrastructure development road and you know, the tangible part is taken care of the efforts will push the gdp growth rate close to 7% in the next financial year that is beginning from 1st of april 2023 and in the 2023 the capital expenditure is budgeted at 10 lakh crore rupees which is constituting 3.3% of the gdp very important factual information and you can use this in mains examination specifically uh, specifically in general studies paper 3 Now, real GDP projections की बात की गई है आर पी आई ने कहा है दैट यूनियन बजट जो टैक्स कैपेक्स फिजिकल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन प्रपोजल है उनके मुताबिक सेवन परसेंट इज द एंटीसिपेशन एंड इवन इकोनॉमिक सर्वे दैट वॉज स्टेबल इन द यूनियन बजट बेसिकली बिफोर द बजट फोकास्टेड दैट सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट विल बी द ग्रोथ रेट द टैक्स प्रपोज इन द बजट हैज दैट थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज वुड बी देयर फॉर द हाउस होल्ड and overall the capital expenditure of the union government is budgeted to be around 13.7 lakh crore 
विच इज फॉर द बजट एस्टिमेट बट जो एक्चुअल रिवाइज एस्टिमेट की है गवर्नमेंट ने मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस ने दैट इज फॉर टेन पॉइंट फाइव लैख करोड़ रुपीज मूविंग टू द एडिटोरियल ऑफ द डे सोशल सिक्योरिटी एंड द स्टोरी ऑफ टू बजट समथिंग इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर जनरल स्टडीज पेपर टू अंडर द सब टॉपिक ऑफ जी एस दैट इज वेलफेयर स्कीम्स फॉर द वनरेबल सेक्शन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन बाय द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट so the part uh, will be looking into this editorial is first will be looking into the theme the theme is about the social security concern some of the important issues include undermining the elderly and pensioners rajasthan ki kya examples lenge recent budget mein kya kya changes proposed ki hai rajasthan government ne national social assistance program ke bare mein thoda dekhenge increment and indexing with inflation part and some important concern now through the union budget 2023 the government has assisted that since 2014 the government has ensured better life and better dignity to citizen this is what the promise was made but the expert have asked question in this editorial whether actually in the ground reality whether in practical terms whether the promise is a rhetoric or is a truth this is what has been question because why this has been questions because there are many welfare program and social security program where the budget allocations has been drastically reduced by the government and even if you talk specifically about manrega jahan pe 60000 crore rupees hi diye gaye hain manrega ke budget ke liye which is very less and the from the, like round the corner there, there's a, a the part of discussion that is one going and this is not appreciated from the expert advice now undermining the elderly and pensioners ki agar baat kare the expert analysis have found that for the budget 2023 and 24 they have sidelined the elderly and the social security pensioners why because since 2017 the social security pensioners has been given the central government under the center sponsored national social assistance program jise n shap bhi kehte hain and that has remained parallelly agar baat kare usme jo amount di jati hai 200 rupees for elderly and 300 rupees for widows person with disabilities has not increased to a number which should be considering the level of inflation that is on going in our country now in addition to those uh, agar absolute or discretionary terms se baat kare sirf un logo ko hi rakhi gayi hai iske andar jo ki bpl mein uh, ke andar 2001 ke census ke andar jo log aaye hain उन लोगों को ही अभी तक इंक्लूड की गई एंड पीपल इन द पार्ट ऑफ सेंसस 2020-11 हैज बीन एक्सक्लूडेड ऑन दैट पार्ट राइट एंड एज अ रिजल्ट द बजट फॉर एनसैप हैज रिमेन एंड कांस्टेंट व्हिच इज ओनली एट 9000 करोड़ रुपीस व्हिच इज आल्सो डिक्रीजिंग स्टीडली एंड फॉर दिस ईयर द एनसैप हैज सीन द रिडक्शन ऑफ 16000 करोड़ रुपीस लेस कंपेयर टू द अदर ईयर जो पहले एलोकेट की गई थी वो 9652 करोड़ रुपीस थी और इस बार की जो एलोकेशंस हुई दैट इज 9636 crore rupees which is 16 crore less right compared to the other year now rajasthan ka ek example yahan pe discuss kiya gaya which is again important uh, for you now recently rajasthan government has come up with a state budget and they have announced a landmark uh, opinion where they given that minimum income guarantee pensions laws and also providing 125 days of work for rural and urban employment guarantee and minimum social security pension of 1000 rupees per month and an automatic increase of 15% per annum it's a very very important step by a state government jahan pe union government maximum 300 rupees hi de rahi hai 300 to 200 rupees is a variation despite the fact there's no increase there's no additional amount in percentage term that has been added but in rajasthan it said that 50% additional will be there per annum this is again very very important steps now there's notional national security assistance program that is called nsap the center sponsored scheme that provide for non contributory income security to elderly people widows pensioners and disabled from the bpl families aur ye basically jo schemes hain teen schemes ko amalgate karti hain teen skill ke sub sections mein dekhi jati hain indira gandhi old age pension scheme indira gandhi national widow pension scheme and indira gandhi national disability pension scheme the percentage and share allocated to nsap of the total expenditure budget has been declining steadily from 0.58% to 0.2% in the current budget now increment and indexing with inflation 
see what is happening in country if there's inflation rise it has to be adjusted by hiking the price or the the wages that has been there right so government is part pe fail even if the social sector expenditure inflation has led to even marginal increase for the vulnerable people the cumulative inflation ki agar baat kare from 2007 and 2023 it's 193.19 percent aur agar annual rate pe dekhe this is close to 6.95 percent बट जो पहले अमाउंट 200 हुआ करती थी 2007 में इट मस्ट बी नाउ एट 586.3 फॉर 2023 इफ इंडेक्सिंग अगर की जाती है अगर एडजस्टमेंट की जाए इन्फ्लेशन के हिसाब से बट द अमाउंट इज अगेन वेरी वेरी लेस नॉट क्लोज टू दिस आल्सो नॉट इट्स नोटेबल दैट द इंक्रीज ऑफ डीएनएस अलाउंसेस गवर्नमेंट ने की है सारे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉइज की जो डी है वो बढ़ाई गई है एंड दीज आर कॉस्टिंग लाइक 12000 करोड़ रुपीस रफली व्हिच इज थर्टी परसेंट मोर देन द एक्सपेंडिचर विच इज देर इन द सोशल सिक्योरिटी स्कीम तो एक तरफ गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के एम्प्लॉयज को बेनिफिट दे रही है और उन सेक्शन मार्जिलाइज सेक्शन को छोड़ रही है विच हु डो नॉट हैव एन ऑप्शन टू गेट फॉर लाइवलीहुड राइट उनके पास ऑप्शन नहीं है कि वो कुछ कर पाए देर डायरेक्टली डिपेंडेंट ऑन गवर्नमेंट पार्ट ऑन दैट पार्ट गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट लुकिंग इट सीरियसली बट ऑन अदर एस्पेक्ट देर डूइंग सो दिस इज वन क्रिटिसिजम दैट इज देयर फ्रॉम द एक्सपो Now some concern. It is like just amount number receiving pensions are important. The central assistance of uh, the state and union territories under the NSHAP is uh, determining based on the B- BPL population is again a concern. Calculating the estimated number of beneficiaries under each scheme by the central government relies on the population figure of census 2001. तो जो अपडेटेड सेंसस हैं उन उनको ना इंक्लूड करने की वजह से कई ऐसे लोग हैं दैट इज एक्सक्लूडेड द एक्चुअल बेनिफिशरीज आर आल्सो नॉट इंक्लूडेड एंड एडिशनली द स्ट्रिंजेंट क्राइटेरिया ऑन प्रोवाइडिंग द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द पेंशन फॉर दोस विद डिसेबिलिटी ऑफ 80 परसेंट हैज बीन एक्सक्लूडेड एंड इवन इन द पार्ट ऑफ द ऑब्सल्यूट बीपीएल कैटेगरी ऑल्सो सो दिस इज द टाइम वे गवर्नमेंट नीड टू इंक्लूड द टू सेंसस इंडिविजुअल and also to adjust the part of inflation rate this should hike the wages that is actually given on the monthly basis now need for minimum conditions and dignity is there the government of india should given examples of rajasthan agar uski examples ko dekhe to us tarah ki methodology ko adopt ki ja sakti hai aur central level pe bhi wo cheeze ko lane ki zarurat hai taki ek credible entitlement mile logo ko strength and accountability mile and even provide for a, a legal protections and a welfare laws the central government must recognize the pension is a right for the work done that does the unorganized sector who are counting similarly to the gdp and overall growth of our economy so these people should never be excluded never be undermined for the fact that they have actually made their contribution in the nation development so this is all the advice that you can incorporate as a part of your answer writing in the main paper Now moving to the MCQ questions of the day. Before I proceed, just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. The first question, the correct option was A. For second question, the correct option was C. Today's MCQ for practice. The first is about the strep A or gas. It's a type of bacterium found in the throat and skin. It's a non-communicable disease. You have to check for the correct option, which among the following is correct. The second question of the day is about the Kanger Ghati National Park. which among the following is correct it is the status of national park in 1982 it is located in the state of uttarakhand so do check it out for the correct option which among the following is a correct one practicing a lot more question will give you an added advantages in the real examination this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcq questions if you have any other concern you can reach out to us we'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off Thank you so much for watching this video.